So, star will dive right in. It's not like I have new material, just a few more examples we ought to do. Let's say x squared times the cosine of x dx. So this is, this example is going to illustrate something for us. Uh, in particular, it's going to illustrate that sometimes you need to use integration by parts multiple times. Um, so we've got two functions. And also that dx, which we'll just attach to the d of e. Um, what should we let u be? X squared. X squared, thank you. At least if we're following a line in. We would let you be an algebraic function before we let it be a trig function. And that leaves the d of e to be the cosine of x dx. And just like, just like with u substitution, to go from u to du, you simply differentiate and you throw the dx in. To go from a d of e to v, it's the other way around. We never use the constant of integration at this stage in the process, though v will be the sign. And this U and this V and all this stuff is intended to let us use that form to the, that the integral of V du is U, wait, the integral of U dV, sorry. is uv minus the integral of v du. In this case, x squared times the sine of x minus the integral of v du to x times the sine of x dx. Okay, and sorry if I get repetitive, but this is something I find that I have to repeat or people will sort of nod along during the class and then make mistakes during tests. Um, when we have a product of two functions, Again, we cannot just integrate these separately. I mean, if we could just integrate these separately, we wouldn't be doing parts at all. Parts wouldn't exist. We would simply be, um, I'll be doing it. So when we see an integral, and it has a product in it, or a quotient in it, or a composition in it, that's never trivial. We always have to pause and say, okay, well, we've got this product or whatever we have, this quotient, this composition, what do we do about it? And I mean, this looks like integration by parts. And to, um, 
to expand on that because maybe your teacher saying something like that isn't very illuminating. The reason it looks like integration by parts is that one of the things where multiplying has a nice derivative and the other thing where multiplying has a nice integral. And that's usually the, the signal that you want to try parts. So we've already used integration by parts. But now we're going to have to use integration by parts again. And to emphasize, when we used integration by parts the first time, we did get somewhere. I mean, x squared is a quadratic. It's a second degree polynomial. It's a parabola. It's kind of complicated, actually. 2x is linear, it's a first degree polynomial, it's a straight line, it's simple. So we did accomplish something here. We can't take our new integral by hand, but it is simpler than the integral we started out with. So, no need to copy that just now. So what we'll do is we'll ignore the x squared sign x for a moment, and we'll just look at this as a new integral problem. And we're again following Lyot here. We let u be algebraic. We let um, then dv be whatever's left, in this case, the sine of x dx. du just keeps getting simpler. That's great for us. And dv at least doesn't become more complicated. I mean, having a negative sign is fine. We're not worried about that. So you, rather, sorry, v times du is going to be simpler than u times dv. Um, in the sense that we're going from a linear function with an x in it to a straight line, and we're not making things any worse here. So really, the only thing we need to be careful of well, maybe only is an exaggeration. There are still plenty of room to make silly mistakes, but probably the main thing we want to be careful of is that we are subtracting this entire thing. U of E minus the integral of v du. And maybe rather than cram this into that increasingly narrow space, so Quickly, quickly copy it over. X squared times the sine of X minus. So negative two X cosine X. Minus the integral of, and I wrote things in a weird order here. That's Put that two in the front, negative two times the cosine of x 
dx. All right, and now we have minor choices to make and minor integrals to take. I mean, for when I talk about minor choices, for example, we could integrate negative two times the cosine of x, or we could pull that out, and then those negative signs are going to cancel. and give us addition and I like to be very careful with these integrals and I think it's a little easier without the negative sign there but ultimately you don't have to do that step Minus, all right, the integral of the cosine is the sine. I mean, at this point, we do need to write the limit of integration and I will just write it over there. We won't include it in the parentheses. And now we try not to fall on our face on the finish line here. That subtraction is going to distribute plus 2x cosine of x minus 2 times the sine of x plus C. So uh, quite the integral. This is something we find a lot, I think, uh, that if when we take an integral, or if you like used Wolfram Alpha to take an integral, you'd see that and you'd think, well, how? I mean, how is the integral a bunch of addition when there wasn't any addition in the original problem. And actually, if we took the derivative, well, if we took the derivative of that, we would get, I mean, let's, I was starting to just say that as a fact, but let's put my money where my mouth is and see if we can show that this really is the integral. If it is, we ought to differentiate it and wind up with x squared times the cosine of x. So the derivative. We need the product rule here. But an x squared cosine of x, that looks promising, plus need the product rule there, the derivative of 2x is 2, the derivative of the cosine of x is the negative rate. Nope. I was getting careless there. The derivative of 2x is 2. The cosine of x gets left alone. And now... Uh -oh. And now, let's see... The derivative of the cosine is the negative sign, so we'll put the negative 2x 
times the sine of x. Oh, he said, and I meant it. I hate troubleshooting on the fly. Okay, x squared cosine of x, x squared and the cosine, that's all correct. Let's see, the antiderivative of the cosine is indeed the sine. The derivative of this is indeed 2x. So x squared times the sine of x minus the integral of 2x times the sine of x. I like all of this so far. If I don't get this when one pass through, I'll just look at it in, uh, at home and drop a note onto Canvas. I don't want to spend the whole class looking at at this. Um, so we let u be 2x, dv be the sine of x, so I like that. The derivative of the cosine is the negative sine, so v should be the negative cosine. du is 2dx. So we've got a negative, got this uv, Negative 2x times the cosine of x minus the integral of v du minus negative 2x cosine of x minus everything looks fine here. x squared sine of x plus 2x to cosine of x minus. Ah, I think everything is good until the end of this bottom line, where negative 2 sine of x, we were supposed to take the integral of that, right? Yes. So then that's a cosine. And then everything can And then everything can. So, so Tempest in a teapot. Thank you for catching that. So then this negative two times the cosine and this positive two times the cosine cancel. And this negative two X the sine of X and this positive two X the sine of X cancel, and we do indeed get what we were supposed to get, which is that. Let's do a kind of weird example. Um, I don't, I, I've never taken an engineering class. Every textbook I see swears we need to do this example because of all the applications in electrical engineering. I can but bow to their experience. Um, this actually looks like a really bad problem for integration by parts. And it is a kind of bad problem for integration by parts. Um, does anybody want to... Why do I say that this looks like a difficult problem to use parts on? Okay, maybe that's a little more open-ended than you're used to, but the idea of integration by parts is that you select u to be something that gets simply 
simpler when we differentiate it. And as evinced by the fact that that T and that E are our bottom two choices, none of the functions here really do that. So the, what seems likely to happen is that we might use integration by parts and then wind up with a problem with an integral that's just as complicated as the one we started out with. And I guess a, a spoiler warning, that's, that's exactly what's going to happen. We'll still follow Lyot. I mean, even if I'm not sounding very enthusiastic about our choices, T comes before the exponential. So will that U be the trig function? And that leaves DV to be E to the X DX. So the derivative of the cosine is the negative sine of x. The antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. And we are ready to proceed. And nor normally I kind of get sloppy and drop the left-hand side of the equality but here we're going to want it. So I'll say this equals u times v minus the integral of v du. Which I will write to be to match the pattern in the original integral. So we have a negative sign from the du, and then I'll write the exponential first, and the trig function second. And what we thought would probably happen, happen, or I shouldn't speak for you, what I thought probably would, ha would probably happen, happen. I say what I thought would happen as if I haven't done this example 20 times, but... We were able to do the integration by part. I mean, we were able to find V, which is the main thing. But then minus a negative plus we get e to the x times the sine of f. So we've replaced the cosine with the sine, but I mean, the cosine and the sine are a like in dignity. They're both defined as a coordinate on the unit circle. Their graphs are just horizontal shifts of each other. How does replacing the cosine with the sine help us? Well, the last time we ran into a situation where we did integration by parts and we got a new integral and we couldn't integrate the new integral off the top of our head, we hit it with parts again. Now, there are differences. Here, we can see that parts is working. We've gone from a 
complicated parabola to a nice straight line. Here, there is no indication that parts is working. And honestly, if I, uh, if I didn't have the textbook and didn't know for a fact what was going to happen, I might just give this up as a bad go instead of doing what I'm going to do instead, which is use integration by parts a second time. We'll continue to follow Lyot. So will that u be the trig function? D of e be the exponential function. Then du is the cosine of x dx. And v is e to the x. And what's going to happen? Let's see, why did... Ah, because those two negative signs canceled out is why we have addition. So let's see what happens. E to the x times the cosine of x in integral is e to the x cosine of x outside of the integral, thus u of e minus the integral of v du. And this is a cute trick, or at least I think it's a cute trick, because, I mean, this looks like total failure. We're back to where we started. E to the x times the cosine of x in the integral, let me not get sloppy. Let me assist sloppiness and write dx equals e to the x times the cosine of x, not in the integral, plus e to the x times the sine of x minus the integral of e to the x cosine of x dx. And we still can't take that integral. Um, but actually, at least in theory, what we've done, what we have here, would now allow like a college algebra student to find this thing we're looking at, looking for. You know, if we call that A, call that B, call this A again, we can algebraically solve for that A, and we can algebraically solve for this integral. Add the integral to both sides. So on the left, now you have two of these.
then divide both sides by two. And on the left, the twos cancel, and you have that integral you were looking for. It's a shoot trick. Um, these integrals are not integrals to be committed to memory. I mean, this is a standard integ integral. It shows up in like all of the textbooks. But if you did suddenly decide to go into electrical engineering, you would look it up as you need it. But at least now that we've seen this, you know loosely where the integral you're looking up comes from. So, let's see. We've basically done this topic, but I don't want to start a new section, and I don't want to end 20 minutes early. So why don't we have you do something for me? Oh, yeah. Why don't we pause my lecture for a bit? And you can see we should proceed. Okay, someone tell me what you they used. Four X. Yeah, I, I, you're right, I changed this. There was a four there, so you might get a slightly different answer. Sorry about that. So that leaves what for dv? e to the 2x. e to the 2x dx. Then du is, I, is 1, or it would be 4 if I hadn't erased the 4. The v is slightly more interesting or intricate. Uh, what v did you get? e to the 2x. I'm hearing 2 e to the 2x. Is that what everyone else got? Getting one agreement and one two uh, silences. I'm a little... Could you have to subtract one from the exponent? Yeah, I'm a little less confident. Um, remember that to go from a D of V to V, you're not taking a derivative, you're taking an integral. And if the derivative of E to the two X is two E to the two X, But what's the integral? Well, what we have here is a little composition. We've got an exponentiation function. And then inside that, we've got a linear function. So let's think this through. The integral of e to the 2x would just be the integral of e to the 2. Oh, the integral of e to the x would just be e to the x. We don't have x, we have something more complicated. 
So the way we normally try to deal with this is I won't use you because you's being used for something else. The way we normally try to deal with a composition like this is as a little substitution problem. Now, we don't have a 2x, or rather, um, we don't have a 2. We can put a 2 in, but that will give us a 1 half. So what's going to happen, this one half is going to come out. Maybe I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't be skipping steps. That one half is going to come out. Um, the 2 and the dx is going to turn into du. e to the 2x is e to the u. We get 1 half e to the u. That's a constant of integration, but we don't worry about those when we're doing parts. I just by sheer habit, um, I use W instead of U because we used U for something else, but then I went back to U. So the e to the 2x is good, but that number in front of it, not a 2. But a 1 half. And I think, and it really is, I mean, persnickety. Yeah, and it's not like I blame anyone for like not seeing this stuff, but these integral formulas we have are extremely specific. So like, this formula, you can have a constant out front, and that constant pours out, and nothing changes. But if you modify this formula in any other way, like if you have a number up here, well, suddenly this integral formula no longer works. Um, so even those seemingly minor changes break the integrals formed of those. And then you're left trying to think, well, we don't have a formed of the for e to the 7x. We do have a formed of the for e to just the variable, for e to the u. Can we do some kind of trick? to make this, where we don't have a form to the, look like something whose form to the we do know. Um, and at this point, let's see. U of E, one half X E, the 2x minus the integral of v du. And 
Oh, that work we just did, let me pull that one half out. We now either, either need to do it a second time or we need to just look up the work we've already done. Um, let's work, look up the work we've already done. Let me also change to a black marker. So we need the integral of e to the 2x. On this frame, we found the integral of e to the 2x. We found that it's equal to that. So one half x e to the two x minus one half times one half e to the two x plus c. Um, there's a little simplification you can do. That one half times that one half is one fourth. Other than that, uh, the way people simplify or what people call simplification seems has always seemed kind of random to me. I mean, you've got an e to the 2x, you've got an e to the 2x, you could pull an e to the 2x out. But it's always, is this really more simplified than this? Why is it more simplified than this? Define simplified. So I don't normally worry about that kind of thing. I do the multiplication. One half times one half is one fourth. But otherwise, I just leave it be. OK, so um, tomorrow, I mean, I don't like to go too fast, but also we spent a few uh, sessions on this material. So tomorrow we're going to start something else, um, a different integration technique. So, I mean, if you can, you know, start the homework on this now, if you can try to at least start getting this into your head, that would be good because tomorrow we'll be moving on to a different technique.